Hello people, in this video we want to look at the epidemiology of poliomyelitis. Okay, so poliomyelitis or you can just say polio. So in epidemiology what should we look at? We will look at the agent host environment, these three, you know, the, this uh, epidemiological triad we shall look at. Then we look at the incidence, distribution, control, possible control of diseases and surveillance. Okay. Is the spelling correct? Surveillance. Okay. So, this is what we want to look at. First, let us look at agent. Agent is who? Polio virus, which is a RNA virus. So, basically, uh, what does this cause? Intestinal infection and rarely it causes CNS infection. Okay. Rarely it causes CNS infection. This is highly infectious. So, basically, how does it go from, uh, it is intestinal, right? So, it goes from feces, fecooral root. Okay. And it can also go from um, droplet infection because it will be there in oropharyngeal secretions. So, which are the two uh, modes of uh, transmission of polio, fecal oral root, droplet infection. Okay, moving on. We are looking at what? The agent. So, basically this has an incubation period and period of communicability before and onset, after onset of symptoms also the person will be infectious. The feces, especially up to months, uh, the feces can have this virus. Okay. What are we looking at? The agent, that is the virus. The virus itself, guys, there are three types in this, uh, type 1, type 2 and type 3. Type 2 is all, uh, is eradicated, the wild one is eradicated, but it is still there in uh, vaccines and vaccine derived uh, uh, polio virus it can cause. Type 3 is not detected, so only thing you have to remember is what? Type 1, type 1, type 1, type 2 is eradicated. Type 1 only you remember, okay? That is the major thing that you have to do. Now, we, have, we are moving on to host factors, agent over. Now, host factors, basically in India, it is a disease of childhood and infancy, but adults also can get affected. Usually, males are affected. Host factors, see, basically, if a person is already infected, what are the risk factors of the paralytic attack, okay? Which is actually very rare, right? The CNS attack, the paralytic attack is very rare. So, if this person, for some reason, he is fatigued, he has a trauma, or he had some intramuscular injection, or he had a tonsillectomy, or he took a DPT uh, immunization. All those can cause the paralytic attack in this already infected person. Okay. Yes. So, this you should focus on. An immunization can trigger the paralytic attack. Okay. So, we are looking at whom? The host, the human. Right. So, in this person, there can be in apparent infection. Okay. You, there are no symptoms or there can be minor illness or there, uh, there can be non-paralytic polio where there will be stiffness and pain in the neck just like meningitis. There can be like meningitis. Paralytic polio guys, paralytic polio is the one they are talking about here. It is less than 1% of infections. Paralytic polio is what? It is very rare, right? And uh, what will be there here? It invades the central nervous system. It causes asymmetrical flaccid paralysis. What flaccid paralysis? Asymmetrical tripod sign so you can see a tripod sign like this right he's balancing himself with his arms right when you ask the child to sit up that is tripod sign there is descending paralysis from the hip to the distal part and there is no sensory loss which is a good thing right there is no sensory loss respiratory insufficiency can lead to death very rare though did you understand? So, some people asymptomatic, some people minor illness, some people neck rigidity like uh, meningitis and very rarely paralytic polio, tripod sign. Okay. So, there is no specific treatment. Now, let us uh, check about uh, newborn. Newborn maternal antibodies will protect it for 6 months of life. So, it is only going from human to human. Now, we finished what? Agent, host. Now, we have to look at what? Environment. When it comes to environment, they say it is a rainy season is very favorable because fico oral root, right? And uh, mainly they are saying that in tropics, there is no seasonal pattern in tropics, okay? No seasonal pattern in tropical climates, but in temperate, they are saying it peaks in summer. Guys, now we are done with what and all? We are done with the agent, host, environment. These three we are done. Now let us move on to incidence, uh, all that, okay? That part of epidemiology. In the world earlier, it was there in uh, many, many, many countries. 
Then the vaccines were extensively used from 1954. Okay. And in 2016, there are only three countries that have uh, polio. That is uh, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Nigeria. These are called as pan countries. <clears throat> they have what? Type 1 wild polio virus. Only type 1, right? We are only concerned with type 1. Type 1 polio virus is there. In India, what is the status in India? India was declared polio free since January 2014. Remember, we have not eradicated polio from India. India is polio free since 2014. The last uh, natural case was in 2011. Okay, so what is India's status on polio? Polio free from when? 2014. What are the vaccines? They used uh, trivalent oral polio vaccine. Then there was bivalent oral polio vaccine. Right? Because uh, no type 2. Right? That is why it became bivalent oral polio vaccine. Then you have uh, what is this? IPV. Okay. And you have FIPV. F is what? Fractional IPV. But what is IPV? Do you think I is injectable polio vaccine or inactivated polio vaccine? It is inactivated. Inactivated polio vaccine. Okay. And what is FIPV? Fractional inactivated polio vaccine. Okay. That is intradermal, that is. Okay. Inactivated polio vaccine. So, this is what was there earlier. Now, they don't want all this oral. They want only inject, uh, inactivated. That is, injection only they want. So, what are we looking at? Vaccines. So, vaccine derived polio virus. Basically, this is what? Because of type 2, right? Type 2. Because of type 2 it is. As you have already seen. Due to type 2 polio virus in TOPV. That is trivalent oral polio vaccine. Because of, why is this vaccine derived uh, uh, polio virus guys? Because in trivalent oral polio vaccines, which had all the three types, because of that this virus is still circulating. Now, in this vaccine derived polio virus, there are three types. CVDPV, that is community transmission is there. Uh, CVDPV, IVDPV, that is immunodeficiency associated vaccine derived polio virus. AVDPV, that is ambiguous vaccine derived polio virus. So, what they want to do, this type 2, they don't want to include in this uh, oral polio vaccine. Right? So, they are trying to have a switch from the Tri, what is this? Trivalent oral polio vaccine to bivalent oral polio vaccine. That is a switch. They want to switch from trivalent to bivalent. So, bivalent will not have type 2. Right? So, that's the switch they want to do. So, first of all, what they want to do in the end game, that's what they're calling it as in this chart. They're calling it as the end game. First, they want to introduce injectable polio vaccine. Then, they want to also switch from trivalent to bivalent oral polio vaccine. Finally, they want to withdraw all oral polio vaccines okay so they want to withdraw all oral polio vaccines just stop all this and go only for the inactivated polio vaccine so did you understand end game did you understand switch these words switch means you're going from three to two okay then fractional dose of inactivated polio vaccine fractional dose they find it better so this they'll give intradermal so, they have found that instead of giving a full dose, you can give a fractional dose. In 2016, they have introduced fractional in inactivated polio vaccine into routine immunization in India. 2016, okay. There are some differences here between IPV and uh, fractional. Let's look at this. Here, IPV is 0.5. This is 0.1 ml. And they are giving this in one dose, 14 weeks. Now, they are they, the fractional, they are giving two doses, 6 and 14 weeks. IPV is intramuscular, fractional is intradermal, okay, intradermal will be upper arm, intramuscular you know anyways it is the thigh, okay, that's it, For now this much information is enough about fractional dose of inactivated polio vaccine. 
Okay, now we are at the end of this. We have to look at surveillance, polio surveillance. Basically, what are you trying to check? Whether the wild uh, polio virus is still uh, circulating, you have to declare it as eradicated, right? So, for all that, you are doing all this surveillance. So, you have something called as AFP surveillance, acute flaccid paralysis. What is AFP? AFP is acute flaccid paralysis surveillance. So basically you will go and ask, find out anybody who has acute flaccid paralysis. You'll take their stool samples and analyze whether it is because of polio or some other reason. Then if it is uh, polio, you will try to distinguish whether it is wild polio or it is because of vaccine itself. Then you will also try to de determine the genetic makeup of the virus. So that is acute flaccid paralysis surveillance. What is that? You're going to go and find out who and all have <coughs> acute flaccid paralysis. Take their stool sample, analyze whether it is polio or something else. If it is polio, we'll find out whether it is wild or vaccine derived. And then if it is um, uh, polio, you'll also do the genetic makeup, check it so that you can know from where it came, etc, etc. Then there is something called as environmental surveillance. What two surveillance is your acute flaccid paralysis surveillance. Then you have environmental surveillance where you will go and test the sewage. Okay. Now, how do you know you have done a good surveillance? There are some indicators, okay? <clears throat> Completeness of reporting. You will make sure that according to the geography, demography, you will uh, take the report and you should submit the report on time, etc., etc. Sensitivity of the surveillance, you should at least find one case of uh, this uh, acute flaccid paralysis for 1 lakh population. In endemic regions, you should find at least two such people in one lakh population. Whom are they telling? You should find acute flaccid paralysis people. Okay, not just not that they have polio, but you should find such people. Then completeness of case investigation. So what you are going to do? You are going to uh, check the stool sample. You should see this adequate stool specimens collected. What is this adequate stool specimen? Two stool specimens of sufficient quantity you should take two stool specimens basically of sufficient quantity for laboratory analysis and these two stool speci specimens should be collected at least 24 hours apart two stool specimens 24 hours apart that means today tomorrow within 14 days um, of the onset of paralysis okay there's another condition here After, uh, within 14 days of the onset of paralysis you should take these two samples okay and then how will you uh, take it to the lab via reverse cold chain that means cold chain means from uh, somewhere to the consumer. Reverse cold chain means from the consumer it is going to the lab, right? So it's reverse cold chain and proper documentation should be there. All these are some words that you should write. Proper documentation should be there, etc, etc. Okay. So what is this adequate stool? Two samples, 24 up, up, hour apart, within 14 days of paralysis, it should arrive to the lab in reverse cold chain with proper documentation. So, stool check. So, that is another indicator to show whether your, sur your surveillance is going fine. Another indicator to show that your surveillance is very nice, you will check the stool sample where? You should check it in a WHO accredited, accredited laboratory. Okay. So, that lab should be within the global polio laboratory network. Okay. So, you should have a nice lab basically. Then you should also follow up with these people, okay? 60 days after the onset of paralysis, you will examine for residual paralysis. 60 days after onset of paralysis, you should examine for residual paralysis. So that completes the surveillance indicator. So in this video, we try to cover the Epidemiology of poliomyelitis, what and all we saw, we saw agent, host, environment, agent is the RNA virus, host is human only and we saw the risk factors, environment, rainy season, etc. Uh, incidence, India is poli polio free from 2014, distribution, pan countries, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Nigeria, possible control, how will you do by um, inactivated polio vaccine, fractional dose of inactivated polio vaccine surveillance what surveillance you have two surveillance afp surveillance that is acute flaccid paralysis surveillance and sewage that is environment surveillance okay so that completes epidemiology of poliomyelitis bye bye